Welcome. This is James Corbett of The Corbett Report with your eye-opener report for BoilingFrogsPost.com. Preserve the crime scene, follow the money trail, establish the motive, look for those with the means to pull off the crime. Any criminal investigator will tell you that these are the most basic principles of any investigation, but none of them were followed on 9-11. In the days and weeks after the attacks, Ground Zero was sealed off by then-Mayor Rudy Giuliani not to preserve the crime scene evidence, but to hasten its destruction. Over 350,000 tons of steel was carted away in the first few months, with most of it being sold to companies like Bao Steel of China, which paid 25% under market price for the scrapped steel. FEMA's own building performance investigation team was prevented from entering Ground Zero or even taking steel samples from the salvage yards for their own report. The National Institute of Standards and Technology tasked with writing the definitive report on the collapse of the towers admitted, apparently without irony, that it did not test the WTC steel for evidence of explosives as mandated by federal law because there was no evidence of explosives. NORAD provided four separate and contradictory stories of its response to the events that morning. Some of the 9-11 commissioners believed that members of the Pentagon had lied to Congress in their testimony, and the commission convened a secret meeting in the summer of 2004 to debate sending the matter to the Justice Department for criminal investigation, but they did not proceed with this proposal. The SEC ended its investigation into the insider trading that took place on stocks of companies affected by the attacks because the suspects of its investigation had no known ties to Al-Qaeda, and thus were, by the terms of the SEC probe, free from suspicion of guilt. The SEC later destroyed all records related to their investigation, the largest such investigation in SEC history, as part of what it called routine record-keeping. Famously, not one single person so much as lost their job with regard to the events of 9-11, let alone faced criminal prosecution for their culpability in the attack. Of course, there was no serious criminal investigation, no attempt to preserve the evidence or establish the means, motive, or opportunity, no inclination to follow the money. The 9-11 Commission itself concluded that the funding of the attacks was of little practical significance. From the very first moments after the attack, the fix was in. Now, 12 years later, one of the researchers who has painstakingly pieced together the details of the attack in order to identify 19 alternate suspects who should be considered in any serious investigation is Kevin Ryan, a whistleblower at Underwriters Laboratory who lost his position when he refused to go along with the company line on the causes for the collapse of the Twin Towers. After 10 years of research into the names and connections behind the 9-11 attack and its subsequent cover-up, Kevin Ryan has released a new book synthesizing that research. Another 19, identifying legitimate 9-11 suspects, seeks to propose an alternate 19 suspects to the alleged hijackers that we have been asked to believe perpetrated the attacks that day. The list includes Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld, the highest-ranking administration officials in Washington that day, and two people who had been intimately involved with continuity of government planning that was actually enacted on the morning of 9-11 and may still be in operation today. Frank Carlucci of the Bush Bin Laden-connected Carlisle Group, Richard Armitage, who oversaw the State Department which instituted the Visa Express program through which many of the alleged hijackers obtained their visas to enter the country, Louis Free of the FBI and George Tenet of the CIA, Ralph Eberhardt, Michael Canavan, and Benedict Sliney, who helped oversee the air defense failure that morning, Rudy Giuliani, who put the emergency management office in WTC Building 7 in the years before the attack, and then oversaw the destruction of the Ground Zero crime scene, and numerous others, including corporations like SAIC, Kroll, Kuam, and Stratisec, that all had intimate ties to the events of 9-11. Earlier this week, I had the chance to talk to Kevin Ryan about his investigation, including those people who were most responsible for perpetuating the cover-up of 9-11 and blocking the investigation into these legitimate 9-11 suspects. You've been watching an excerpt of this week's Eye Opener Report. To continue watching the report, please log into BoilingFrogsPost.com.